Have you ever been on a roll with your health and fitness? You're working out, you're eating healthy, things are muy bien for you. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you revert back to your old habits and destroy all the progress you made. You feel disgusted with yourself, falling into a rut, you feel terrible. Thinking you might as well have never tried. You ask yourself why, how could this happen? How could I do this to myself? What the hell was I thinking? I used to live like this. It happened so many times in the past, but after many trial and errors, I found an approach to life that will yield you consistent results in your goals you want to achieve. I'm super excited to share this with you guys because once you get this consistency part down, you'll get more results faster. In this video, we're going to go over the Q routine regret cycle, breaking down how you can control your cravings, master your routines, and why you can't stay consistent with the good ones, how you can feel more rewarded in life at the end of the cycles than feeling regretful. Let's break down the cycles and how you can use them to your advantage. It all starts with the Q. The Q is what triggers the need to do a routine. Based on what routine you decide to do, you'll either feel good and rewarded after it, or if you decide to do a routine that isn't good for you, you'll feel unhappy and regretful of your actions. Let's say for example, binging on junk food is a routine you want to avoid. The Q is your craving for maybe something sweet like ice cream, cookies, etc. We all have the cue, even myself. It's just a matter of what you do with the cue and if you let it control you. Acting on impulse rather than proactively acting. There's nothing wrong with having some sweets here and there, especially if you're eating our SoFit protein cookies, but if you're really out of shape and not working out or eating a lot of overall unhealthy processed foods and you want to get consistent with some good eating routines and an exercise routine so your cues don't have control over you and you can start doing the routines that make you feel more rewarded, healthy, and accomplished, you'll need to control your cues. Now we'll talk about how you can control the cue and directing your actions so you can feel more rewarded. Let's build upon the unhealthy eating habits because I have a lot of experience with this myself and helping my clients lose weight as well. My most successful clients do just a few key things to curb their appetite for sweets so stick around cause I'll be sharing how one of my clients lost 50 pounds in 12 weeks without giving up sweets and much more. But before we jump into controlling the cue, I want to give you guys the foundation piece to all of this to set you up for success. That is preparation, preparing for what is to come, which is that cue to fuck everything up and ruin your progress. I'm not just talking about the cue to eat unhealthy, but maybe the cue to drink alcohol, smoke a cigarette, stay out late, or jerk off. Whatever it is for you and the routines you want to stop, all this goes deeper and letting your cue control you will bring you down a miserable path. Breaking your consistent streak of good habits, one of the main reasons why you lack consistency in your life is because you lack preparation. Really taking the time to say yes to yourself and no to other people slash routines to focus on your goals because you know if you want to achieve your goals, you must practice these good routines consistently. Here is the first thing for killing the cue to unhealthy eating, which is meal prepping. With this, you are deciding what your future self is going to eat. My client Kenneth hadn't meal prepped in his life up until my coaching program. He isn't the best cook, but he committed to learning what to do and tried his best to meal prep so he could get his weight down. He picked a day which was Sunday to meal prep for most of the week. I helped him create a simple meal plan that could work for him. The meals he decided to meal prep was, drum roll please, chicken and rice <laughs> and protein oatmeal. Not a big surprise, but we wanted to keep things simple. And that's what you want to do with your preparation. Just keep it simple. I've meal prepped for the last two to three years and I've tried to keep it as simple as I can. And now I have an amazing girlfriend that went to culinary school and knows how to make amazing meals. So I've delegated that task to her 
She does it much better than I do and makes the meals even more tasty. But even if you don't have someone to do it for you, make the time for it and learn the skill of cooking for yourself if you don't have the money to hire someone for it. It all starts with the cue. So identify what your cues are for other habits and try and find a way to overcome them with preparing for that moment. If you'd like personal help with creating a meal plan and or identifying your cues to other routines you'd like to stop, then there will be a link in the description to our SoFit coaching program where we'll show you exactly how to identify your cues so you can prepare for them and stop, and stop regretting your life. life. So we've touched slightly on the routine which comes after the cue, but the routine is the meat and potatoes of this video, so get ready to embrace some hearty information. We follow routines every day. It's just about making the good routines work for you. Making the good routines and finding a way to maintain them over time, therefore yielding you the results you want to get in life. It is hard work, if I'm being honest, but it is 100% worth it. The routines that are bad are causing you to feel this feeling of inconsistency in your life. That's probably why you clicked on this video in the first place. Routines like working out, eating healthy, and overall just being in a good place with other areas of your life such as business, money, relationships, etc. Are very hard to maintain and that's what I want to help you with in this section of the video how we can maintain these good routines and make you feel the most consistent you've ever been getting you the best results in life to maintain good routines you're going to have to change your life you're going to have to change the people you hang around if they're not already supporting your routines you want to become consistent with and the routines you want to detach from i don't care if you've known your friend family member and or girlfriend for however many years if you want to stop doing xyz routine drinking smoking unhealthy habits period and you do those routines with them you're going to have to separate ways for the most part it's your responsibility if you continue to hang around them and or put yourself in tempting situations therefore you have to either detach from those encounters or communicate to them that you're going to make changes in your life and if they want to make them with you boom you got an accountability partner but on the other hand if they if they laugh at you or are confused and just don't get what you're trying to do and don't want to do it then that's a sign that you're outgrowing them because if they aren't willing to change they won't trust me i've tried this before i've had people in my life that i've wanted to help change because i was changing but they just didn't get it for example, one of the persons was my ex-girlfriend. I wanted to personally not drink as much and um, I wanted her to not drink as much either, but she drank all the time. I kept saying to myself, I can change her. I'm just going to tell her how bad it is, how bad it is the drink and um, tell her the workout with me, tell her the workout and do more of a healthy lifestyle. Guess what? nothing changed she didn't want to do it so eventually i said to myself enough is enough and i don't want to put energy into someone who isn't putting energy back into me so i called her up and i told her that i don't want to see her anymore i don't want to be together she took it pretty well and we went our separate ways it hurt making that decision in the short term but looking back on that moment in the long term I am so glad I made that decision because it gave me the freedom to be single and live my best life and actually find a partner down the line that supports my best life. So the situations you put yourself in most of the time make you fall out of your good habits and break your consistency. So take fucking responsibility for your life and stop pointing fingers at other people for your problems. Up until this point, I had been pointing fingers at everybody upset myself. I was identifying as the victim in my life and my circumstances. It wasn't until I looked in the damn mirror and said this, this is your fault. Are you going to continue to sit here, complain about it, and just make the situation worse by avoiding responsibility for your actions? Keep hanging out with her and settle with your life as it is. 
Or are you going to strive for more? Kill your old identity and make a new one where you see your problems for what they are and come up with solutions to them. Be willing to let go of her and other people and other routines that aren't supporting your lifestyle, therefore allowing you to meet new people, build new routines, and finally start achieving your goals. You must realize that your routines are a combination of your environment, circumstances, and past experiences. And based on that, we have the foundation for creating habits. And you are at the benefit and detriment of your habits and routines. But the good news is that you can change your future routines and experiences by learning how to and what to do. I've shared some stuff about it so far. The main takeaway from the past part of the video I'd say is, is will it be willing to let go of people and routines that don't support your future goals and the routines you want to be consistent with. Let's imagine that you've let go of those things and people. Now you have all this time to build new routines. In this section of the video, I want to help you figure out how to make those new routines work for you. I'm going to tell you how I've made them work for me and how you can possibly make them work for yourself. There are many good routines that I do and are very consistent with, for example, working out consistently. The way I've been able to maintain consistency with this routine is through identifying as somebody who works out consistently, setting my lifestyle up in a way that supports this identity and making it realistic. I can confidently say that I haven't missed a workout in the last four years and it feels great. Are all my workouts good? Hell no. But do I do them anyway? Yes. The reason you can't stay consistent is because when you don't feel like doing it, when you don't have the motivation, you find an excuse not to do it. You sink you back sink into back your, into your old, reality. old reality. You find a way to forget about it temporarily. You let yourself slip back into that old identity. It happens. But you have to catch yourself when you do this before it's too late. Snap out of it and get to the gym or whatever good routine you want to do. Please don't use your circumstances and other responsibilities as an excuse not to take care of yourself. And I'm not saying you have to do these good routines every day. Maybe you just get a good workout in every other day, like three days a week. Something that you can maintain and, and be consistent with. Because if I'm being honest, I see a lot of people going all out for a few weeks and then I don't see them for a few months at the gym. This is a very unhealthy cycle. The best cycle is a cycle you can maintain. If you're so unhappy with your situation that you try and take a lot of action really fast, you're going to fuck it up. Instead, take action consistently over time. Don't go to the gym for two hours, maybe just go for 30 minutes. At the end of your workouts, you want to feel good. You want to feel refreshed. You want to feel like you still have energy to do stuff in your day. That brings us to the end of the cycle, which is after the routine, feeling good, the reward, or if you did a bad routine, you'll end up feeling regretful. My goal with this section of the video is to minimize the regret you feel in life and optimize the amount of good reward feelings you get in life. This is the cherry on top of the video, so stick with me to the end. The next day after you drink a lot of alcohol, the next day after you get not that much sleep because you stayed out late, the next day when you did something you said you weren't going to do, or the opposite case where you wanted to do a good routine but you didn't do it, you find yourself feeling regretful. On the other hand, the next day after you work out, the next day after you eat healthy, the next day after you get enough sleep and sunshine and connect with nature, the next day after you do all that stuff, you're going to feel rewarded. You're going to feel more proud of yourself and you'll feel more strong, alive, energized to keep up with your good routines overall. Being able to perform and show up in other areas of your life as well, such as your job and or business, with people and other relationships you may have. I cannot describe how good I feel after a good workout and cleaning up after myself. There is nothing better than that feeling. I feel like I am ready to take on the world and kick ass after working out and getting that refreshing shower in. The problem here is that our human nature doesn't make good routines easy. Our human nature 
makes bad routines easy. So before you do a bad routine, stop yourself and identify what the cue is. Are you mad, stressed, bored? If so, instead of doing a bad routine to de-stress yourself and temporarily cure your boredom, try to do a good routine to combat this. The cue is going to be similar every time. There's not much you can do to completely eliminate the cue, but you can set your lifestyle up in a way that supports good routines rather than bad ones. In the end, it's all about doing the good routines, especially when you don't feel like it. And doing them when you don't really feel like it comes down to discipline. If you feel like you're lacking discipline, then check out this video right here because with the information in this video, you'll learn why you lack discipline and exactly what to do about it. I'll see you over there.